All right. Series of telling us bodybuilding. We got Robert Fletcher. Robert Fletcher is the host of Muscle and Fitness Talk Show, and he's also a business development for Top Doctor Magazine. Did I get that right? You got it, John. Okay, good, good, good. Now, um, before we get to uh, the Muscle and Fitness Talk Show, how long have you been in the game of bodybuilding? Because you must have been in it for since the Weeders started. Yeah, so it goes way back. You know, I've weight trained since a teenager, athlete. Um, everything's evolved. I got very involved in fighting in, you know, I guess street fighting too, but street fighting <laughs> lead, leading to kick, kickboxing and martial right. arts. So okay, uh, I became obsessed with that. Now, back in the day, uh, I'm going to date myself now, but they used to term it as cross training. You know, ah, you're, okay. you're doing yeah, yeah. two different, I'm doing weightlifting and and uh, martial arts so okay. but i've always emphasized weight training it was always a very important component to whatever i did okay and i knew that enhanced my athleticism my strength uh my mobility my flexibility back then though it was sort of taboo because it, everyone thought the opposite that's right yeah the first example of that one person that comes to mind who defied all of this was billy blanks and he was the creator of tai bo he, that's right, he, that's right. he was like sculpted like he was a sculpture and I would mm -hmm. go up and train with him in Roxbury, Massachusetts. But to answer your question, you know, 13, 14, started weight training, got involved in martial arts. Then um, just a real kind of interesting story, how I met the Weeders in, in 1990. They did a master showcase of champions back in the day. I would travel around the country doing breaking demonstrations, you know, baseball, basketball, my shins, the ice, the bricks, and all that crazy really? stuff. Really? Yeah. So um, – they invited me to do this show, which was a combination of bodybuilders and martial artists. Okay. So I, I put together this demo reel, which showed me doing the cross training, going back and forth between kickboxing and the weight room. Mm -hmm. And after that video, Joe and Ben uh, came up, introduced themselves. They did a, just a small little blurb in muscle fitness. And rarely back then did you see, you know, a martial arts guy in, in a right. magazine. So I put they put me in flex, which was a hardcore that's right artist. that's right yeah it was flex was the hardcore on muscle and fitness and muscle there was a fitness. third one well they had muscle fitness hers for the women that's right that's also right so had then betty weeder she uh she came up with shape magazine so those magazines back in the day where they were the leading magazines in, in the fitness industry that's right that's right so yeah. back then of course no technology there was no email there was nothing but after they did that one little article i was flooded with letters it was incredible and then like seminars happened and everything else. So I owe them a lot. I became very close with Ben, more close with Ben. But both of them are just, you know, of course, they defined the whole industry. They really changed the, the game, the dynamic. Uh, they were the difference with Joe and Ben is they are extremely passionate. You know, it changed hands a couple of times since they moved on. But they were so passionate. That's why I kept growing and expanding. But as time changed, um, now everything's digital. So no more magazines. But so then after that, that led me to do events, which led me to do events for Arnold at the mm. Arnold Classic back in 1992. Wow. Another quick, okay, another kind of quick, funny story is I was invited. Do you remember when Donald, Donald Trump uh, he was part owner of the Taj Mahal or whatever that was? Oh, yeah, sure. Of course. So he yeah. and Vince McMahon teamed up to do a fitness expo. Really? Okay. And they also started their own bodybuilding organization. Yeah, the WBF, yeah. WBF, right. Uh, so you do, all right, cool. Sure, sure. So they invited me there, and then I did my breaking thing there, you know, Donald and and, and um, Vince, and that's where Arnold's people saw me. So I was the first sport outside of bodybuilding to go to the Arnold. When wow, I did, really? That's impressive. Yeah. yeah it was now, now, it's, now it's all weekend oh, with all different types of- Oh, it's of crazy. So yeah. I went there just as myself to do my breaking. Mm -hmm. Then I asked Jim Lorimer, who, God rest his soul, he was really a driving force to make that whole weekend happen. Of course, Arnold, too, as well. But I went to Jim and I said, why don't we have a bunch of my martial arts guys come back the next year to do a more intense, a uh, whole big martial arts demonstration, which then the following year led to the first sport, the martial arts championships at the Arnold, which evolved okay. into 80 sporting events. 30,000 competitors, 300,000 people flooding Columbus, Ohio that weekend. Wow. I have like a ton of questions already. Okay. Yeah. So let's, all right, before we get into, because I have a lot of questions about Joe and Ben Weeder, because they're almost like, the Weeder brothers are almost like 
like mystical figures, right? Oh. You talk about them now, and they're they're almost like gods of bodybuilding, right? It's you know, it, it, it you're, it's almost like you're not talking about a normal human no, being. I, I agree. But well, well let let let's get to because there's a lot of lot of questions about that. But uh, how far did you go in uh, mixed martial? No, martial arts. I'm sorry. How yeah, it was you? back then. It was kickboxing. So I was actually yeah. uh, national kickboxing uh, champion. Then I. In 1996, I was a North American kickboxing champion. I was on the U.S. kickboxing team over in Germany. Wow. We won the world championships there. So, uh, yeah, like I said, once I uh, – the interesting thing is my dad had me starting. You know, I was pretty athletic younger, but yeah. one of the things I love was golf. So really? I played golf from the age of three until I discovered martial arts. Then, yeah. Then it was just over. And, you know, of course, now I wish I still had sort of a golf swing, but – that's that's not there anymore. <laughs> you want to, you, you know what's funny is that usually that's what happens is people tend to have a sport and then the the weight training is secondary and then they fall in love with the weight training. The weight training well, is awesome, yeah. Yeah, but with me it was the complete opposite. I I never did any sports. Right? I tried them, I didn't like them. My parents were typical Italian like my father wasn't like pushing sports or anything he you know dinner's on the table you you, you were born in brooklyn born yeah. Brooklyn, right yeah right yeah originally brooklyn yeah and so you know it wasn't pushed if i didn't like i you know i remember you know basketball you know you know football you try everything but i just couldn't i was just not really into it you know and even like you know the judo and the martial arts you try that but i just couldn't take guys touching me like i mean i, I just was like right <laughs> but then like i just found weight training and what happened was you know i, I will I, i'm sorry i'm going off on this tirade but it, it's just funny i just realized that to me it was the total opposite i i did it because i didn't ha have an interest in sports and most people have an interest in a particular sport and bodybuilding comes secondary and then they fall over bodybuilding well i just discovered like girls right and then um i was like well i gotta get in shape i was like in junior high school so i was like 13 or 14 the garage then, gyms yeah and that was my basement. Yeah. And then, and then the it was, right. then it was, you know, I picked up a flex magazine and it was, uh, I'll never forget. It, it was Sean Ray in that famous picture of him. I think he was leaning up against the Ferrari. He, he, he was, well, he, he was one of the best. His, his yeah. his, talk about a great physique. Oh yeah. And he, and I remember seeing the, the, the magazines. And then I remember asking my father, you, can you buy me the workout set and the weeder bench and all the weeder stuff and everything, everything was weeder, you know, back then. All right. Enough about me. Okay. The weeders, they 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 they're kind of like when you mention the weeders for people that don't know who they are, they they actually developed the IFBB, but they they I don't know who was more type A. I'm assuming Joe Weeder was more type A personality. What I mean by type A is I mean stop at nothing to be successful, and that means nothing, right? I don't know if it was Ben or Joe. I'm assuming it was more Joe. Am I am I accurate? I, I would think I would think so. Ben was driven. You know, Ben was mainly responsible for the IFBB, that whole part of the organization. You know, Ben uh, Joe uh, was very involved in the the publication component of things and the and bodybuilders. And of course, the IFBB came along, mm. and then that just took off. And of course, you know, under that platform that they have now, or back then, that all the publications. But then they, of course, have the Olympia weekend, which today it is the greatest bodybuilding event yeah. in the world. Yeah. yeah, so that's where I'm pretty much getting at. It's like the the Weeder brothers have this reputation of um, if you even think of crossing us, um, they are going to smash you to pieces, <laughs> right? Like they did with bodybuilders that went over to the WBF or yeah. the, you know. Um, but at the same time, you have to give them pretty much every ounce of credit to uh to to uh developing bodybuilding as to what it is today. Oh right? no 100%. and it and it almost takes it almost takes it doesn't it seems that that personality is necessary in breaking through in new areas of whatever kind of business or technology because that same personality is Elon Musk. It's Dana White. It's it's um uh with the guy from Amazon I forget his name Jeff Bezos, Jeff Bezos. you know it, they all have that the Donald Trump it, they all have that same if you get in my way I'm gonna crush you because nothing's gonna get in my way and it's almost like they can't be well rounded people right 
they have to be, they, all they have is this tunnel vision and they have to be successful. And that's how I picture the weeders because uh, the, the, the behind the scenes stories with the weeders uh, are, are they, they they weren't nice, but they did what they had to do to make bodybuilding, you know, uh, thrive. And I think I, I agree, but I will say that um, from what I know of them, and I think you'll, you may agree or disagree with this, but I think a lot of that attitude or perspective on things comes from just a real deep internal drive of passion for what yeah. they love. Right, exactly. And when you love it that much, if you're able to find something that you love to do and like that it grew, if, if it were not for them, there is no, there would be no Olympia. Right. There would be, you know, bodybuilding. What would bodybuilding be? Or we're not for Joe and Ben Weider. An example is, you know, when Joe and Ben Weider handed that over or just, you know, moved on, you know, uh, David Pecker, no disrespect to David Pecker at all. He bought him out American media, but David Pecker was by far, he, he's no Joe or Ben Weider. Yeah. You know, big that shoes that was not his big driving shoes force. Right. You no, know, his driving force. And of course it's business, it's sales. But his mission was not the mission of what Ben and Joe's mission. Right, was. right. That's where the agreed. Difference. And um, and I just felt like once they once they moved on, um, you know, I just saw it. And then now, fortunately, uh, Jake Wood owns it now. Jake yes. Wood's a very successful businessman, and of course, Dan Solomon runs the Olympia, so he's right. very integrated into this whole world of bodybuilding for for yeah. years and years. But Jake is extremely passionate, so that makes a difference. Right, right, yeah, no, and I, and I agree. They have done a great job expanding um, bodybuilding into uh, as as much mainstream as possible, right? But but we'll get to that. So for 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 the crowd or the people that don't know uh, Joe Weider or Ben Weider, uh, here are a couple of stories that I've that I know of that I want you to uh, expand on. You had mentioned that Vince McMahon started the WBF. And they wanted to compete with the IFBB, right? Which it didn't work out too well. I think it was only lasted two years. Yeah. But tell the audience the oh, because it was pretty simple. Vince was just offering them more money. Come here, right, exactly. Right? Right. And it, that's and it, that that's really all it was. And, and you kind of can't blame them, right? You're gonna offer me more money, okay? I'm gonna go and compete over there. But after after I think it was only two years that it lasted. Tell the audience what Weeder did with the guys that came back to the IFBB. I don't think any of them broke the top 10 ever in, a, in an IFBB show. Yeah, again. I, I don't know, <laughs> yeah, I don't know too much about that, but I can't, oh, okay. I can't argue. Well, see, that's a hard call because one side of it, they're seeing the money. But to me, if I'm looking at that whole picture, right. you know, one, knowing what Joe and Ben represent and stand for all these years, mm -hmm. knowing at that, at that time, they had these phenomenal publications and just incredible outreach worldwide. Right. With all due respect to Vince McMahon as well. You know, he has the outreach. He wanted to do this. But I'm looking at the platform. Right. So if you're a bodybuilder and say Vince offers them whatever X number of dollars and maybe Joe or Ben was not paying them that much. On the other side of that, with the exposure that they received from all of their publications, their shows, mm -hmm. Their seminars, their appearances, all right. I think that number would exceed what Vince was actually providing to them. Yeah, yeah. yeah Depending yeah. on who they, it, they had. Yeah. Had in the in the long run, obviously, the right decision would to be with to stay with the Weeders. Um, and what's funny, as karma would have it, and I'm not much of a believer in karma, but law of averages, we'll call it. Something very similar happened to Vince McMahon, and I'm not going to stay on this topic, but somebody broke into Vince McMahon's territory of of professional wrestling yeah and offered uh the, the yeah. wrestlers to, and right. that was and that was um Ted Turner yeah Ted Turner bought WCW and he wanted to compete right. with Vince McMahon he offered everybody twice the money Vince was paying him so they all went over Hulk Hogan Savage all those guys they all went there and then and it, it, it didn't last 10 years and everybody was and yeah. that's just another example. Of like <laughs> and Ted Vince Turner, just crushed him. Ted, Ted Turner was looking at uh, what he thought would be the, the big money, right? Right. It's because he yeah. sees how popular this is. But Ted Turner is not Vince McMahon, just as Vince McMahon is exactly. not Joe Ben Weider. Exactly, exactly. But you're talking about you're talking about young guys 
that were trying right, to right. they're trying to grasp at the money that they can make. That they're, they're trying good to good guys too. Them. I like Gary. Oh Spider, yeah, Mike Gar- Quinn, Tim yeah. Quinn. I, I, they were they were Barry people- DeMay. That's right. They're, Gary Stridham, they really thought he was going to be the next Mr. Olympia. You know, oh, he, was, he was he was, awesome. was phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Um, there were, and then there was, you know, uh, there was when Joe and Ben Weeder, like I said, as much as they did. Look, let's be let's be reasonable. If there's no Weeders, there's no Arnold Schwarzenegger. There's no Mr. Olympia. There's no IFBB. We don't know what the state of bodybuilding would be today. But that being said, um, they did pull a lot of politics too, from what I understand. I mean, you can go back and look at the 1980 Arnold, uh, Mr. Olympia when Arnold came back and won. Um, and then um, I believe it was, uh, what was his name? That washed his hands of the whole thing and said, the whole thing is corrupt. Uh, uh, the guy, the guy with the mustache. He's uh, with, he was with the weeders. No. Yeah. He was with the IFBB. And then what happened was um, 1980, uh 1980 olympia was coming around and he was a favorite he had won the heavyweight frank zane in 79 oh, frank zane, no 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 frank zane won um uh the the overall and and he was uh, the favorite to win uh, the next year and it was mike mentzer mike mentzer i was gonna mike, say mike mike mentzer uh mike mentzer mike mentzer was phenomenal yeah and mike mentzer uh was the favorite to win that year um, and he came back better than ever. He was bigger than Frank Zane. Everybody thought, you know, my God. Then and, and Arnold had had left, I think, at seventy five or something like that. Or I'm not remember. And 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 the Weeders had brought Arnold back in 1980, but nobody really knew. Like you knew if you went to Golds or if you were in that kind of bodybuilding scene in the close scene. And then when he showed up uh, to the press conference beforehand, everybody knew that the fix is in right and then when arnold came on the stage he was in shape but he did not have the muscle that he did five years prior and um they gave it to him uh they gave him the uh the, the title uh because we knew that arnold was going to be the next mr hollywood and well yeah and- i think you know that's for sure you know arnold was obviously the staple the face but i think when you're talking about there's politics and everything, of course. Yeah, right. But there's and there's decisions. You can look at the UFC. You look at boxing. You know, when it comes oh, down, one hundred percent. You know, when it comes down to decision. You know, boxing is terrible. Now it's like it's you know people are going to say those things, but yeah, I'm not saying it is or it isn't. But what I'm saying is, uh, it also comes down to I guess the degree of, of how you know much is you know being yeah. pushed towards. Okay, this is not correct. But uh, with Arnold and what I think. What, what and again, I, I can't. I'm not speaking for, for or, or, or I don't know much of. But when I look at that whole dynamic, um, there was the, the great ones. You had the Frank Zanes, you had the Mensers, you had a, you know Arnold. Yeah. Lou, but uh, Arnold, without doubt, he was together. They knew that they can catapult this to the next level. A hundred percent. Hundred percent. Absolutely. So it's almost like it's a PR strategy. They know but what they yeah. You can't dispute Arnold's physique. Not at all. And his that prime happened. and his prime he was next to none. Unbelievable. But in his prime, he was nobody could come close to him in, in his prime. He was no. extremely dominant. He was as dominant as a Lee Haney or Dorian Yates was yeah. in their heyday. But it was that comeback. And in the following year, too, it was 81 when they gave it to Franco Colombo, and Franco Colombo had the bad leg and and the gyno. So there is some kind of you know controversy when it comes to the weeders, but at the same time, and, and I also understand that the weeders are very generous when it comes to their athletes. I understand that um, they they made good money with their contracts, with weeder contracts, um, with the magazines and so on and so forth. I uh, I've heard uh, great stories about them as as that as as well. Um, I am I like what's happening in bodybuilding today and you know it's the 60th uh anniversary coming that's up. right that's right that's right that I, remember the, I remember the 50th one because they gave phil heath the gold the gold yeah. sandow right i like the way it is running now personally because you don't know who's going to win like all those years arnold was mr olympia and then you had frank zane for three years um and then in the early 80s it was kind of like you know you had samir and you had um 
uh, Chris Dickerson, and you didn't know. And then Lee Haney came in and dominated, and Dorian came in and dominated, and Ronnie Coleman came in and dominated. And there was a couple of years they probably shouldn't have won, but they gave it to them because they were the champs. But now you have no idea. You could lose. I mean, we've had since Phil Heath, we've had what? Uh, Big Ramy, uh, Sean Roden, uh, Derek Lunsford, Brandon Curry, um, uh, Hadi Chopin. Yeah, I'm uh, looking forward to the 60th. It's going to be yeah. So I point. like it. I like it like that. Like you don't. What do you know think of C? Going. What do you think of C bum? All right, I, I, I get, <laughs> I get, I get, I get. Okay, uh, I get, I get crucified for this on I, on on my comments, but I'll I'm just gonna be honest because I I keep it hundred on my on my channel. I keep it hundred. These young kids think C bum is Mr. Olympia. He is not Mr. Olympia. Okay. He mm -hmm. is a he is the classic physique, Mr. Olympia. He oh, well, is his physique. Yeah. So what I'm asking <clears throat> is physique. Yeah. I mean, look, I'm a I'm a fan of the big the big boys. I was yeah. always a fan of the freaks. <clears throat> to me, classic physique is like this. Um an NBA for people under six foot tall. That's how I look at classic physique. They kind of can't really make it. But we're going to give you a division where you can compete on your own. And they, the, the thing with bodybuilding is they knew if they marketed it right, that it would it would expand uh, the 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 fitness industry and it would bring more fans in because it looks more attainable uh, to them. But they, you know, a lot of guys look at guys that are monsters and they go either one, I don't want to look like that, or two, I'm never going to be able to look like that. And when they look at a C bum with the small waist. And the pecs and the broad shoulders, and he looks amazing, and he comes in shape. And I know he has work ethic, and I know he comes in shape every year, and so on and so forth. It's it that that draws more of the younger audience in, and I think that draws more of the mainstream audience in because it was a really smart idea to to do that. But being a hardcore bodybuilding fan, nah, I'm a fan of the big boys. Always was, always will be. Um, yeah, there's gonna be some <laughs> there's gonna be big boys at the 60th. That's for sure. You know, you that's kidding. Gonna be, you're gonna be able to make that. They got at the Olympia? Nah, probably not. I won't. I won't probably won't be able to. I'll probably. I will be at the New York Pro because I'm, I'm 20 minutes away. But have you been to the? Did you go to uh, Steve's gym there? Bev's gym? I've never. Believe it or not, I've never been to a uh, 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 Bev Francis powerhouse. It's just awesome. It is the mecca. It's. Just I crazy. could. I could only imagine um, what it's like. I I go to Signature, which is like. I guess you could say New Jersey's version where there's a lot okay. of pros that go Great there. Great gym, yeah. Yeah. So so let me – I'm going to ask you because this is – you're an old school guy. I'm a relatively old school guy. I'm a, I'm 48. You're a little bit older than me. But I want to ask you this question because it, this seems to be the most controversial question. The guys today, the, they don't work as hard as they – this is what people say. The guys today don't work as hard as the old school guys. The guys today – don't come in as lean and hard as the old school guys. Do. The guys today don't pose as well as the old school guys do. Now, do you believe that, or do you think that that is just typical of the older generation talking about the younger generation? Because you kind of see that in every. Well, you story. know, you know that's across the board. That's what everyone says. Right. Yeah. Across yeah. the board, we're right. not just pointing out bodybuilding. It's it's like everyone yeah. says it's not the way it used to be. Right. Yes. It's not yeah. the way. You don't work as hard as we did. You don't do this. Right. I think it's um, there's some may not work as hard as some may some may work out work. I mean, you can't tell right. me that people today, there's some guys that are just not out working, you know. Yeah. Back in the day, you know, it was, you know, I, that, I hear that all the time. You're correct. I hear yeah. that in everything, you know, not just uh, the world of bodybuilding, but uh, they didn't work as hard as we did back. They didn't have to go through what we went through. And there's a lot of um, stuff going on today. I'm not going to go down that path, but it's right. just uh, – twisting the mindset of, of people on you know how to get from uh where i am to where i want to go yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah no i i agree uh with what you're saying his 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 i think bodybuilding just like any other sport uh always kind of transcends itself and i think bodybuilding with having the open class and no holes barred uh basically can evolve into these freaky mass monsters that we see uh, today, right? Whereas, you know, you look at something like football or basketball or baseball, and they instill these rules that kind of pull them back a little bit, and they really can't 
you know, you know, they have to be a little safer, no headshots and so on and so forth. And, you know, blah, 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 blah. And it can't be as physical. And you go down the line. So it kind of holds them back a little bit. Whereas bodybuilding, the open class, nothing holds them back. So what you're seeing now is you're seeing guys like the every the every top five bodybuilder is equivalent to what Dorian was. When when Dorian first came out, you're like, Jesus Christ, this guy's a monster of of man. And now you see that like being 300 pounds on your off season is like nothing anymore. I don't uh, I don't know. Have you ever taken your body to that point of bodybuilding, like to go to the level of diet and just putting you partially through what they go through? Because I, I, yeah, I'm I pretty have, disciplined, but, it, but I don't know if I could. Yeah. Uh, take it to that level and i didn't have the i I don't have the genetics they did i i competed i've always wanted to be a bodybuilder i always had aspirations of being about i I, i've always loved it i will always love it but i just didn't have the genetics right you know what i mean i didn't have but i mean today if you see a professional bodybuilder in person especially open uh it is you you, it's like you're looking at you, you you look at them and you go i can't believe somebody could be that massive like uh uh Akeem Williams used to work out in the gym that I go to. I don't know if you know who that is, but I, I know of him. I don't know him personally. Three or oh, three hundred and twenty pounds in his off season, three hundred and fifty. He is a huge human being, just enormous. Um Victor Martinez uh uh trains in the gym that I go to. I mean, he's retired now, but he's still a, a big dude. Justin Rodriguez. Um and what's funny is the hardest working guy that I've ever seen was Sean Clarita, the 212 bodybuilder, the 212 Mr. Olympia. Yeah. yeah. I, I've i never seen anybody. He's a machine in the gym. Right. Oh, so he, he works out at the, where you, where you work well, out? Well, he, he moved to Texas, but he used to work out at Signature. He's from originally from Jersey. And I've seen both sides. So I've seen Sean Clarita where he is in the gym and he's a machine. And I mean, when I tell you a machine, like I wouldn't be able to do his workout. It's, it's you know, you look at him in awe, like – he just keeps going and going and more weight and more push. It's unbelievable. And then I've seen Justin Rodriguez, and I, I have not yet to see that guy do a pull up or a chin up. I mean, I just, <laughs> I just go. What well, are you going to work out? What I don't there, understand. There you have it. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. Dynamics. But, but who, in your experience, give me some of the old school guys that you've seen uh, train that you were just in awe over and hammered by. Well, I was uh, I was fortunate enough to go out to Venice, California, way, way, way back when it was like the Muscle Beach, right? Gold's Gym, and you know, of course, I would catch, um, you know, the bodybuilders Sean Ray and you know those guys, and, and you know that time frame. But just seeing them work out and train, and that's back in the, you know, that's just a different era. But it was so yeah. cool. The energy level there was unbelievable. Right. But you know, my. Uh, my role in the world of bodybuilding was war for myself. You know, I do follow it. It's because I'm in it, but yeah. you know, and I do admire like what it takes to get that, like you said, to take your body and to mold it and to sculpt it. Not what I don't care what anyone says. There's work involved, you know. Oh yeah. To oh, get yeah. to that level of the the amount of discipline it takes to yeah. do that and to sustain it. Yeah, to that's be right. able to get on that stage and to perform all day long. I don't know if people that are not in it realize how difficult you're under the bright lights. I mean, you're depleted your body. I mean, yeah. down to like the low, low, low percentage of body fat, uh, yeah. dehydration. Um, you know, and that's just uh, you know, today discipline is everything, and that's where just overall, I just think we a lot of people, majority of people lack discipline, you know, they want mm more of the shortcuts not really even talking about bodybuilding just in general you know yeah how, yeah well it's instant how, how gratification do how yeah. do i get there but i don't have to put in all the hours so i don't right. have to put in you know i don't have to have that discipline man that i i reinforce my, i have a protocol every single day i reinforce my I, I drill it into my subconscious because you know you get sidetracked from all the different things that happen in life um you know i'm a worker and you know the roller coaster it's gonna be different things happen and these guys, especially seeing them and being all these years, going to the Arnold like almost every year, going to the Olympia almost every year. Um, you know, I'm not a bodybuilder, but I'm a, a a worker, and I know what it takes for them to get to that 
exceptional level of elite sculpted bodies, like you said, when they walk on that stage, I mean, the 60th, uh, the 60th Olympia is going to be wild. Yeah, it's going to be insane because you got and there's a lot of young blood, a lot of young blood that's coming up and look better than look better than ever. But you're right. What a lot of people don't understand is the depletion of body fat technically is deadly. It's, uh, it's, it's just you're hitting the uh, it's not safe. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're at the not safe point, which is why you can't really sustain it for too long. Right. No. Um, you know, you the, the water depletion is technically uh uh fatal. You know, you go down you go down the line, you know, the the um the PEDs these guys use, the peptides, the growth hormones, the insulin, whatever, because their mindset is that of an athlete's mindset. Not all of them, but the ones that make it to the very, very top, that break the top five in the Olympia, they have the genetics, they have the work ethic, and they have that athletic uh mindset, which is I will stop at nothing to beat my opponent. And that and, means- And, and their knowledge, not, their knowledge, not to interrupt, oh. but their, their knowledge, I you can listen, they're, they're, they're like scientists. Mm -hmm. They're scientists with their body. Yeah, they, know? they, ha they, because be, it's like, uh, it, it's like, uh, well, like to use an example of another sport, right? It's like, you know, Phil Jackson was a, was a good basketball coach. I mean, I apologize, he was a good basketball player. But it, in order for him to become- a fantastic and one of the best basketball coaches, he had to learn every little bit of detail in basketball in order to bring himself to that uh, elite level of coach. And it's the same thing with these bodybuilders. That's why a lot of them go on to be great coaches afterwards. I mean, Milos, Dave Palumbo. Um, you know, Milos George is great. He's Jack, another great oh, one. The guy's yeah. brilliant. The guy's absolutely yeah. brilliant. You know, George Farah, you go down the list, and this that's why these guys, you know, uh, Charles Glass, and that's why these guys – become great coaches because there is almost nothing that they that they don't know and they're always looking to learn yeah they're always always looking to learn why don't you tell us about uh hosting muscle and fitness talk show tell tell me about that yeah so that's uh that's in their studio there in arizona pretty full so when they brought me in so uh my very good friend and mentor dr robert goldman he's it was long time um advocate of bodybuilding, very involved with the leaders early on. Uh, he founded the National Academy of Sports Medicine, one of the first certifying bodies of personal trainers. He also started uh, the A4M conference, which is anti-aging, which is a lot of what you hear today. You know, a lot of these different modalities that are out there, red light therapy, the cryotherapy, um, all these different things that are going on to enhance or optimize your health and performance and recovery. Hap or is happening under this umbrella known as anti-aging, which is now uh, exceeds a $300 billion industry. Like one of your other shows there, same thing. You know, I, I heard you talking, uh, I think it was with um, uh, Seth. Seth, Seth Spartan, you're, yeah. you're talking about the Ozempic, semi-glutide, mm -hmm. terzipatide, yes. all these different things. You mentioned it earlier, peptides. So it's a constant changing on how to, you know, you peptides. One of very popular one right now is BPC-157. You know, how do you take it to, to the next level? But he started this anti-aging conference. So he invited 300 doctors back in 19, I think, 87, mm -hmm. I think to the Dominican Republic to explain to them anti-aging. Now, you can't change chronologically, but you can slow the process down, obviously, just through taking care of your body, weightlifting, strength training, and doing these things. But sure. it has grown. So now he has these two conferences, uh, and he is on the forefront of this whole thing. So muscle and fitness, you think of those two worlds, the worlds of Dr. Bob anti-aging, the IV infusion, the peptides, the BPCs 157. So you have the doctors over here, not the conventional doctor, really, the more of the functional doctors, the holistic right, right. doctors. Then you have the bodybuilders and the elite athletes, the demographic of muscle and fitness. So now I always said, what if you brought the two worlds together you know, you have Dr. Bob's world and muscle fit uh, and the Olympia, they have a platform, they have a platform. So that's what we did. So the talk show is basically interviews with leaders and experts in health, fitness, anti-aging. You bring it together, the doctor, the athlete, the coach, uh, the company representative, like say for red light therapy, for example, or someone that owns an IV infusion, like someone I work with uh, a lot who uh, absolutely is awesome, Sam Tejada. Uh, he founded Liquivita one of the most more successful uh, IV infusion therapy places uh, in the country. Really? So, yeah. So he's, um, he's ex extremely knowledgeable. 
So again, it's all about education, raising awareness, and also bringing it back to what we said earlier, just to touch on it a little bit. When you're going to, I always wondered with these athletes, you know, even cutting weight, like the UFC fighters, where they go through this extreme weight cut mm. where you're totally sucking everything out to the point of unsafe again. Mm. But once you do that point, I always thought why there should be like a an IV infusion immediately for at least hydration. Yes. You know, agree. Yes. Yes. You know, yes. So now and I know that they're obviously Dan Solomon does a great job. Jake does a great job on safety for the athletes because they are um, on that. They're teetering at that fine line. You know, we've seen athletes pass out, you know, That's right. you know so it's, uh, you know, we just want to educate and raise awareness. But the talk show is about those um, uh, combining those different forces, but providing the viewer, whether you're an elite athlete or a person just looking to, you know, optimize your health and wellness. Uh, to what what is out there? Some things that are new, whether it's the peptides, the IV infusion, mm -hmm. uh, whatever it might be. Now, where can people uh, listen to the talk show or watch the talk show? Yeah, so it's videotaped in the studio, so they can go to musclefitness.com. Okay. Uh, for the recordings, and then uh, there's a category called Muscle and Fitness Plus, and okay. that's where that's where the show is. All right, I'll actually put that in the description area so people could just click and go. Yeah, I'll and, send you a few links too. John. Oh, great. Thank you. Yeah, that would be great. And tell us about your personal podcast. Yeah. So again, doing the, pretty much the same thing, you know, piggybacking off the other, you know, uh, Muscle Fitness Plus is another platform that I put that podcast on. And as I said to you also, you're more than welcome to utilize your podcast to take Muscle Fitness as another platform, but uh, Spotify, iTunes, but same thing, interviews with the leaders and experts in the industry of health, fitness, and anti-aging. And what's the name of the podcast? Rob Fletcher Podcast. Oh, that's easy. Okay, Rob, <laughs> Rob Fletcher Podcast. I'm also going to put that in the um, uh, in the uh, description so people can just go and click and go and listen because it is extremely uh, knowledge. There's a, there's an extreme amount of knowledge that people uh, need to need to uh, be concerned with, you know, because you know. Um, one thing, one, one of my, you brought up Chris Bumstead before, uh, and it just leads me to another quick topic. These younger, you know, these younger guys, they, 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 they tend to idolize uh, the social media uh, bodybuilding influencers or fitness mm -hmm. influencers. And the truth of the matter is uh, they're, they are very young and they're in shape and so on and so forth. And you see them work out and it's, it's very uh, motivational, but they're not as educated not nearly yeah. as educated as somebody like yourself or to somebody like the guests that you have on, or even, even myself. Okay. I, I, I'm not going to put myself in the category of the people that you have on your show, but even, even myself. And uh, like you said, they just have this mentality. The younger generation has this, uh, I want it now mentality. Um, and they are willing to go and, you know, the next level. try, try whatever, you know, I don't, I don't have to do that. Uh, they do, they use such and such anabolic steroids. So that's what I'm going to do now. Truth be told, we've all done it when we were young and stupid, but the generation is worse now where, where, whereas they want, they want the result faster. But here's the thing, the, ed, the, the information and the education that you can get now is right at your fingertips. And it's from people like yourself and your talk show. Or or even I'm gonna again I'm gonna throw myself in it. Even people like uh, myself with my with my podcast, I do what's called Anabolic Academy every um, I I uh, tape it every Monday and it comes out every Tuesday morning, and I have people that just send me questions, and I answer the question. And if I don't know the question, I research it beforehand and make sure that I get the right information. And um, I I try to really push the younger generation, whether it's guys in the gym or people that watch my show or whatever the case might be to, to find people like yourself so that they can be educated. Cause look, when you're young, you think, you know, you're indestructible, right? And you're going to take this and you're going to be the next, whatever the case may be, the next Chris uh, Seabum, uh, whatever the case is. And at, at the very least, at least educate yourself and listen to people that Know what they're talking about. Don't listen to the Joe Schmoes in the gym. Don't listen to the 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 you know the 
the fitness influencers on, on social media because they have a six pack and they're 21 years old. There's no 21 year old kid knows more than me. It's impossible. It's just, no. because I have, you know, 20 more years experience. You know, and, you, and, you, <laughs> and you, you know, just by the, those few things that you said, and then again, you know, as, as your show, you know, you're, you're, part, you're part of that puzzle that we're all doing. You're same, same thing. You're educating and raising awareness. When you have people on like you've had, you know, with Seth or whoever it may be mm -hmm. addressing these different things that are out there. Most people, the, what's the first thing they do? Just take the Ozempic thing, being that that was the topic. Ozempic. Yeah. I want to lose weight. Ozempic. Semiglutide. Terzipatide. They just think they're going to drop their 30 pounds. Now, the one thing is, the first thing, and this is where, you know, just this conversation, the game changer is when the younger people are entertaining, you know, how do I get to that level? Instead mm -hmm. of saying, okay, I want to get right to that level, go to a place like IV Infusion, get your blood work done. That's blood right. work is done on different levels. Uh, I know liquid vitas is extensive blood work, but what's that going to do? You may have a problem and you don't even know about it. So if you went to that level of anabolic steroids and there's something showing up on that blood work, where that could totally be, it could be a life or death situation. And we've seen it. We've seen it in, we've seen it with Rich Piano. We've seen it with Dallas McCarver. We've seen it with um, uh, uh, George, uh, I can't remember his, his last name. We've seen guys die because of conditions they didn't know they had. Heartbreaking. That's why, you know, one of the, the things I constantly and consistently say is get your blood work done at least once a week. Many people don't even remember when they had their blood work done. Yeah. So yeah. once you do that, then the first step, identify needs and deficiencies, put you on a, you know, a prescription of what you need, but also what are your goals and objectives? What's your lifestyle like? Mm -hmm. You know, that's where they come in with the IV infusion. It's known as a Myers cocktail. So whatever those vitamins and and minerals and nutrients that they have to put into that one bag of IV, that comes in. And again, you know, why start? Why not start off and doing things safe? Where okay, if I were to do this, I want to make sure that where where are my levels are at, mm -hmm. you know, where I'm where my baselines are, and that's where the the doctors, more of the functional doctors, come in because a baseline for a conventional doctor that could be one thing, but you know, there's no cookie cutter. That's there's right. No, this is not going to be what you and I are going to have two different levels. So that's right. You know, and, and different prescriptions, but, but anyway, yeah, I'm all about that. And I, that's one of the things I know that Dan um, Solomon and Jake, you know, they're very um, determined to continue that, to protect the athlete, you know? So uh, because it is a very fine line there that when they get to that stage, and like I said, the heat, the constant, the, the, the stress that puts the posing, Mm. You, some many people may think it's you're just up there flexing, but that's when you have no energy. <laughs> and you're, no, unless you've done it, you don't understand yeah, what it's like. It's un, un, uh, it's un, it's it's not like any other sport uh, because no other sport, with the exception of maybe fighting, where you have to make weight. Are you so depleted? Yeah, and you still have to grind it out you, you, every all day, that, all weekend long. Old, yeah. Well, longer than that, but when you when you show up for com competition, now you have to carry. Now you're really sucking it all down. Yeah, yeah. And that's just where I, I just that's discipline. Yeah, and that's why I threw that. I threw my I threw the towel in. I went, I ain't doing this anymore. Fuck this. <laughs> well, I know, well, I tell this story all the time. I'll tell you this story quickly, and then I'll let you go. Um, I knew I didn't have the genetics. Uh for it right i knew i you know you know you know <clears throat> i would i would be the best uh bodybuilder if there was an equivalent to you know a a, a men's uh rough touch uh, adult team right <laughs> <Is> that, <laughs> yeah yeah but i was never gonna make the nfl put it that way right I, i'd be the best guy in there right so, so i'm the best guy in retro or la fitness that kind of thing right so uh, i remember i was bodybuilding you know, you could see I have a few, uh, you know, uh, trophies back there, yep. right? And I always in love with bodybuilding. Yeah, who I, who are we having back here there, John? I'm trying to find see. Oh, who I got. Okay, let me see. I got. Uh, this is Branch Warren. I got uh, Branch Warren. I got uh, Hide Yamagishi, um, Kevin English, and Jay Jay Cutler. And then I think I see oh, yeah, Gary Carter over here. Oh, oh no, that, yeah, that's my. That's I got uh, Gary Carter, Lee Mazzilli. There's a picture of me and Muhammad Ali there. And then oh, I have, cool. 
And then I have autographed boxing gloves from Evander Holyfield. Were you a boxer? No, I was just a real big boxing fan. Like I said, I've always, I tried everything, you know, yeah. there was a time where I tried boxing too. I tried everything, but, um, which is funny getting back to a previous point that you said about weightlifting and, 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 um, and, and athletics. Um, and a lot of people don't know this, but Evander Holyfield was not a natural heavyweight. He was actually a light heavyweight and then he became a cruiserweight and then he became a heavyweight, but he actually trained with Lee Haney to put muscle on. I remember Lee, that Lee Haney was I, Mr. Olympia at the time. I remember both, that. Yeah, yeah. They're both from Atlanta. Yeah. That, that's right. That's right. Yeah, you're right. Okay. So what the hell was I talking about? I don't even remember what I was talking about. Oh, right. Okay. That quick story. So I knew I didn't have the genetics, but I still was like, well, I, you know, I could try this. I could try that. And I went to see several coaches and they were like, well, you, you know, we could do this. We could do that, you know, but so I still had some possibilities and I, I would win local shows, right? I would win local shows. And then I remember I went to uh, Team Universe, which is, you know, a national level show every year. And I went there to see what a national level show was, what the competition was. Is that was the like. one in uh, Jersey? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's it's Team Two, I think. That's yeah. right. Yeah. And John Meadows won the overall. John Meadows. John Meadows won the overall. And I never, I never forget. I went home and I told my wife, uh, yeah, I'm done. I'm never going to be able to look like that. It's never. If John that's what Meadows. it takes to. God rest his soul. John. Oh. John Mountain Dog Meadows, yeah. Mountain Dog. Yeah. That guy, you talk about knowledge. Yeah. Oh, the guy was brilliant. And a tremendous – I remember seeing him winning the whole thing and going, I have. I don't stand a chance. You know, it's just a realization. But just the fact that you're there along John Meadows. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just the, It was just the realization that I finally had to come to and go, there's <laughs> no way in the hell, no matter what I do, am I going to look like that? And that's when I went, okay, we're, we're done. And he we're was done. such a great guy. God I've heard, I've heard. I know, yeah. I know. It's kind of sad. He's another guy that, you know, passed away way too early. Way too early. But tr tremendous knowledge. He would have been... He would have been another elite trainer. He would have been in the Milos Charles oh, Glass category. Yeah, he, he, he would have been awesome. Yeah, he yeah. was really on his way to becoming one of those elite trainers. He was tremendous knowledge when it came to bodybuilding. But Mr. Fletcher, I just want to thank you um, for coming on my show. It's it's a pleasure and an honor to have you on. Much respect and love always. So um, it is Muscle and Fitness uh, Talk Show, which is on the MuscleandFitness.com. I'm going to put the uh, the uh, link in the description and the Robert Fletcher podcast, which could be heard on Apple iTunes, Spotify, Hi. where else? Must Must Fitness Plus and YouTube. Okay, Muscle Fitness Plus YouTube. Okay, great. And I'm gonna have all those links in the description so they can just click and go and check you out and get all the information they need. You're the best, John. Look forward to having you on my show. Oh, please, thank you. Anytime, just let me know. All right, thanks, John. Have a great all night. Right. You too.